Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shalom to everybody. Peace and blessings to everybody. Thank you, Lord. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Okay. I won't be before everybody long. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't be before everybody long. But the Spirit of the Lord has just been showing me some things. Thank you, Yeshua. Hey, the spirit of the Lord has just been showing me how the Lord is breaking the spirit of barrenness off of his people and that the Lord is beginning to raise up some strong men and some strong women in the body of Yeshua to bring forth the truth of the gospel. And the Lord says that he is bringing his instructions and his Torah into the fivefold ministry. The Lord says that he's doing a new thing in the earth realm through his people. The Lord said that he's gonna manifest his truth through us. And the Lord said that he is downloading and he's refreshing us. If we just come to him and we just yield and we surrender and we set our face like a flint, we surrender and we travail and we persevere in the spirit. The spirit of the Lord says that he will surely download everything that we need into our hearts, into our minds, into our spirit, into our souls. The Lord said that this is a time of encouragement like I said before, the Lord is breaking the spirit of barrenness. The Lord said that our people have not been obedient, but they did not know. The Lord says that I did, my people did not know that they were disobedient. The Lord said it's time for obedience. The Lord said it's time for obedience. He said, but my people did not know that they were disobedient. The Bible says that that the Lord at one time, he winked at our ignorance. But the Lord said that we are not ignorant anymore. And the Lord said he's bringing us out of bondage. He's bringing us out of witchcraft. He's bringing us, bringing us out of manipulation and control. The Lord says that whatever witchcraft, whatever manipulation, whatever control has handed to you, the Lord says that it is time to give it up. The Lord said that some of us have received things and we thought it was him, 
but those things came through a lot of manipulation. It came through control. It came through witchcraft. And it was designed to keep our people in bondage. It was designed to make us think that it was the Lord. But the Lord said it's time for us to obey his law, statutes, and his commandments and his instructions. Instructions in Hebrew means Torah. The Lord says that I did not give you those things because it did not come through obedience to my law, statutes, and my commandments. So the Lord said that the enemy came in and he used manipulation, he used control, and he used witchcraft to bless God's people. The Lord told me a few months ago that if his people do not repent and obey, that the devil will bless them. All right? Because uh, the world system is getting us prepared to worship the man of sin, the man of lawlessness. That is what all of this paganism and different things have been going on in the earth realm. The enemy is trying to deceive his people by blessing them because it's all designed to get us to worship the beast, the false prophet, and the man of lawlessness. The Lord says that the power that blessed his people came through the power of the beast and the power of the false prophet and also the false prophets. The Lord said, stay away from the false prophets. The false prophets do not have the heart of the Lord. They are not following the instructions of the Lord. The Lord says, stay away from them. The Bible tells us in Torah, in the book of Leviticus, to stay away from people who use divination and sorcery. The Lord says that the false prophets have used witchcraft, they have used divination, and they have used sorcery to speak things over the people. The Lord said that he is breaking that and he is bringing us into obedience to his law, statutes, and commandments. The Lord said that the false prophets have spoke things over us that deal with divination, witchcraft, control, and manipulation. The Lord said that that was not me. That was a demonic force because of our disobedience uh, going against following the Lord's laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? The Lord is breaking us from that. And what has happened is it has caused his people to become barren. It has caused people to become barren. It is designed to um, not only manipulate us, but to deceive us. Because whatever the enemy gives, it does not last long. But the Lord says that my covenant is everlasting. What the enemy gives is only temporal. This is why the Bible says to set your affections on things that are above and not things that are on the earth. This is why the Bible says to lay up your treasures in heaven. The Lord said that people have been blessed by the enemy through manipulation, control, and witchcraft. The Lord says he is breaking that from, from his people because he wants us to come into divine order. The Lord says my kingdom is about law and order. It's about instruction. It's about decrees. It's about ordinances. It's about uh, regulations. The Bible says to do things in decency and in order. The Lord said it's time for his people to yield and to surrender to his power and his authority. That's what the Lord is saying to us today. He's breaking us from things. The things that the enemy has blessed his people, blessed God's people with, is causing his people to error, is causing his people to sin. The Lord said, that was not me that blessed you. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow to it. I believe that is in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. My mother used to quote that scripture to me all the time. She used to tell me that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow. Whatever the Lord gives, there's no sorrow. Whatever the enemy blesses you with comes with sorrow. It comes with manipulation. It comes with control. It comes with sorcery and witchcraft. The Lord is saying, my people don't want to admit 
that the enemy blessed them. But the Lord said, it's time to repent. The Lord said, it's time for the hearts to be purified. The Lord says that this walk with me is a heart condition. The Lord says that there are a lot of people that are in ministry that their hearts are not pure. And they are speaking witchcraft and sorceries over the people. The Lord said it's time for his instructions, his decrees, his regulations, and his ordinances that is spoken and commanded by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy to be implemented in the fivefold ministry. The Lord says that when the people prophesy, it must come with instruction. All right. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 36, it says that the people uh, had begun to start walking in their evil ways. And Jeremiah was prophesying and saying that the people need to start following my word and instruction. The Bible says that the prophetic gives exhortation, edification, and comfort. But the, but the Bible also says that Torah gives us instructions. The Lord has already given us decrees. The Spirit of the Lord says, stop letting these false apostles and these false prophets speak their decrees over you. The Lord says that it is demonic. The Lord has already given us instructions and decrees, regulations and ordinances. It tells us in the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse eight, it says that if you keep the words of this Torah, he said, you shall have much success. The Lord has already laid a blueprint for us to have success. He's already given it to us in his word. Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's mighty name. So the Lord said it's time for his remnant to come forth. The Lord said that his remnant <coughs> is getting ready to take the place of the ones that are lying. It's time. The Lord says that my glory is upon you, my sons and daughters, my daughters of Zion. The Lord said it's time for the daughters of Zion to come forth. Whatever it is that the Lord says that the women have to say, the Lord says that you have every right to say it. The Lord says that the women and the daughter of Zion are free. Just like the men. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit came to fall on all flesh. Not just the men, but the women too. The Lord said it's time to come out of bondage. The Lord said the bondage is coming through manipulation, control, and sorcery and witchcraft. The Lord said that it, that was not me. That was man from the enemy. But the Lord said that in this time, he is breaking it in Yeshua's mighty name. That is the word of the Lord. The Lord wanted me to speak that. I wasn't expecting to say that. I was, um, my plan was to go and to start teaching, but the spirit of the Lord wanted me to speak that because he's, he wants to awaken his people. He wants to purify their hearts. He wants to purify our hearts. He wants to create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. The heart, the purifying of the heart is very important. All right. In Yeshua's mighty name. Okay. Um, we're just going to start out with a few scriptures. I won't be before everybody long. When we go to the book of Titus. Now I'm learning uh, for, my, for me. I am learning something very important. I am learning that... <clears throat> Uh, and as we all should know, and we weren't taught, that Yeshua and the apostles taught from Torah in the New Testament. When you go to 1 Timothy, let's start with 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Thank you, Lord. Listen to what Paul is saying here. When you start at verse 13, 1 Timothy 4 and 13 says, until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church. 
encouraging the believers and teaching them. All right. Now, what scriptures was Paul telling Timothy to focus on and read? Torah, Torah and the prophets. Yeshua, our Messiah, always quoted from Torah and the prophets all the time. All you got to do is read Luke 24 and 44 to tell you everything Yeshua fulfilled. He fulfilled what Moses, the prophets and what David said he would do. So these are scriptures that we have to pay attention to that we never really paid attention to before. When it says, until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church. Now, if you was in a modern day Christianity church here in the Western world and someone was teaching you this verse here and it says, until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures, they will make you think that it's talking about the New Testament. When Yeshua and the, and the apostles was teaching, there was no New Testament. They were teaching from Torah. When you read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, when Paul tells Timothy that uh, he said, Timothy, you have learned through the Holy Scriptures. That means that Timothy was learning uh, Torah and the prophets from his mother and his grandmother. So whenever they were reading Scripture, when you read in the New Testament and they were talking about how they were reading scripture, they were reading from Torah and the prophets. So that's the same thing that we have to do today because everything that Yeshua and the apostles said in the New Testament came from Torah. The scriptures that you read in the New Testament is nothing but Torah. When Yeshua says, to love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, that's Deuteronomy. Even in Matthew 23, Yeshua tells the people and his disciples to, to listen and to obey what the Pharisees say because they know Torah. He said, but don't do what they do because they don't practice what they preach. So this is important for us to know. We must know what we're reading because the problem is the reason why the generally the church doesn't want the teaching anointing to be implemented is because they know that people will wake up once people begin to start learning. If you notice generally in the Western world, ministries, teaching is not implemented in the church. Teaching is a part of the fivefold ministry. But there's a prophetic word to that in the book of Isaiah when it talks about how the teachers will not be hidden anymore. That's why the teaching is not implemented in the church. They purposely don't want people to know Torah, which is his law, statutes, and the commandments, his instructions. So this is what Paul is saying here. He said, focus on reading the scriptures to the church. That means teach them Torah. Look at what he said in verse 11, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. He says, teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. That's for our generation today. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. The youth today is not being taught love, faith, and purity. They're being taught that the only thing they need to concentrate on is their gift and their anointing. But there's no love, there's no faith, there's no purity, there's no charity, there's none of that going on right now. The body of Christ is in a mess because there's no order. All right? Shalom to everybody that's in Clubhouse. God bless you all. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would like to mention, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. All right. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, this is talking about growing in faith. What we have to understand is that whatever the apostles and Yeshua was saying in the New Testament, it all geared toward Torah, because that's what they were teaching. All right. So when you look at verse eight, I'm going to read verse eight first before I read the rest of the verses. 
When you look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, it says, So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really that you really are among those God has called and chosen. See? He wants us to work hard at that. He don't want us working hard on trying to gain popularity and trying to be in somebody's ministry because of their name recognition. If you look at these billboards and these posters of these ministries nowadays, they, they place people as gods for these conferences. You see nothing but people. I saw a billboard that a man and woman of God is doing. They're inviting a prophet to do something sometime this month. And the Lord just showed me the spirit, the spirit behind it. They're, they're, want, they're wanting to be worshipped as God. This is, a, this is a me, me thing that's going on. All right? And this is, a, this is a popular prophet too. And this prophet is not teaching Torah. He's a false prophet. The prophets in the Old Testament was getting people back to following God's ways. Okay? Now look at verse 8 again. It says, the more you grow, where, where am I? I'm sorry. Uh, Lord, help me. Where am I at? Okay, look at 2 Peter 1 and 8. It says, the more you grow like this and the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord, Yeshua, but those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Y'all see that? I don't think that was the verse I was reading. Where's the verse I was reading, y'all? Help me. What verse was I reading? Oh, Lord, I didn't lost the verse I was reading. It, it don't matter. I, it's okay. I, I'll find it again. But when you look at, look look at, well, let, let's go to verse three. Let's start at 2 Peter 1 and 3. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to him, coming to know him, the one who has called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now, remember, prophetically, the spirit was moving at the beginning when we first started. And the Lord was telling us that a lot of the blessings that we have received come from manipulation, control, sorcery and witchcraft. The Lord said that was not me. If what the Lord gives us does not line up with this, what we're reading here, it is not of God. Look at this. It says. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. The promises of the Lord are precious. They don't come with manipulation, control, sorcery, and witchcraft connected to it. It says these are the promises that enable you to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. If the enemy blesses you, which he can because he has the power to do that. It is going to come with the world's corruption. That's why, generally speaking, the church is corrupt because their blessings are not coming from the father. Why? Because they are, they are not obedient to his law, statutes, and commandments. Look at, look at verse five. It says, in view of all this, Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Is any of these things happening in the body of Christ right now? No. 
Because these so-called blessings people saying they're given is not coming with self-control, it's not coming with provision, it's not coming with moral excellence, it's not coming with knowledge, patience, endurance, godliness, brotherly affection, love for everyone. There's no love nowhere in the body of Christ. But those are commandments. You know why there's no love? Because we're not following Torah. Yeshua specifically said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40, that there are two commandments according to the law and the prophets. He said, love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Then he said, the second commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. But when you read Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, in the complete Jewish version, it says that the hearts have waxed cold, because we have distanced ourselves from Torah. That's what it says. Read Matthew 24, verse 12 in the complete Jewish version. It says that. But the verse above that, verse 11, it says that many false prophets will come. These false prophets don't have no love. They don't love us. They're liars. They're not in Torah. When you read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse uh, five, I believe, or, or, or verse six, it talks about how the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord are his ways. That's why he gave people Torah through Moses. He was giving us his character. We don't, generally speaking, the body of Christ does not have those characters of the Father. Look at this. Look at verse eight. It says, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Yeshua. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. It's a lot of false prophets that's trying to bring back people's old sins back to them that they've been delivered from. The Lord delivers you and cleans you up. And as soon as you come into the church, you got false prophets telling you that you can fornicate, that you can have sex before marriage. And the Lord has already delivered you from it. Why? Because the enemy is trying to stop you and stop us rather from receiving the marriages that we should have. Look at this. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. Remember the Lord told the church in the, in the book of Revelations, he said, you have increased in riches. He said, but you are naked, poor, blind, naked, poor, miserable, and blind. It says, look, develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. The enemy is, is, is slick. He's trying to get us to forget about what the Lord delivered us from. And he's using a lot of popular prophets to lie. That's the new gospel nowadays. If somebody is a millionaire, then that means they can tell me about God. That's the deception. This is why it says in Jeremiah 5 that their houses have waxen rich. And they are deceitful houses. The Bible says in the book of Timothy that is that men creep in with uh, silly women laden with sins. That's what's happening right now. These men are trying to stop women from marrying true men of God. They want them to be whores. Same for the men too. They want men to be whoremongers. That's the problem right now. Look at this. Look at, verse 11, look, look at verse 10. This is 2 Peter 1, verse 10. It says, so dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you, are really, that you really are among those God has called and chosen. That's what, he wants to, that's what he wants us to work hard toward. Not working hard trying to get next to somebody because of name recognition. It says, do these things and you will never fall away. See, this is why people are falling away in sin and they're still in ministry. People are trying to figure out how are they in sin and they're in ministry. Look at this. 
then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Yeshua. That's what he wants us to concentrate on, y'all. Eternal life. Look at this. Look at verse 12. It says, therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and you are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. What is the truth? Yeshua, our Messiah, is the truth. And what did he do when he got here? He fulfilled Torah, which is the truth. Psalms 119, verse 142. David says, Lord, your Torah is truth. Whenever you read about the, the word truth in the New Testament, it's talking about Yeshua fulfilling Torah. Yeshua was the word, which is Torah in the flesh when he was here. The church psychologically tried to program us to make us think that Yeshua didn't follow Torah when he was here. Yes, he did. He fulfilled it. That's why Paul says in Romans 8 that the father sent his son in a body just like ours. And then Paul says in Romans 8, it says that the flesh never followed Torah and it never will. That's past and future tense. So he died to give us the power to put it in our heart to follow it. That's why Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 31 that I'm going to put the covenant in your heart. So this has caused our people to be saved, but your heart is wicked. For years, we've been trying to figure out why the saints is out of line because they don't know the truth. Look at this, verse 12. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already knew them and are standing firm in the truth. You have been taught. The apostles taught people Torah. Yeshua taught them Torah. That's what they're talking about here. The body of Christ generally is a curse right now because we have been learning a anti-Christ Messiah since, we been, since we've been born in this Western world. Paul said that if any man teach any other Christ, let him be accursed. But we were taught a Christ in church that didn't follow Torah, even though the Christ we read in the Bible fulfilled Torah by following it. You see how they, they ran a cold game on us, boy. Look at verse 13. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. We need people to remind us. Nobody's reminding us to stand firm in the truth. But the Lord is raising those people up. That's the remnant. It says, look at verse 14. For our Lord Yeshua has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I am gone. Look at verse 16. He says, for we, for we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of Yeshua, we saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when we received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, this is my, this is dearly my, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. He said, you must pay close attention to what they wrote. Look at this, y'all. Look, you must pay close attention to what they wrote. The prophets. Come on, prophets. This is what we need to pay attention to. N not trying to be like other prophets. He says, you must pay close attention to what they wrote. He said, look at this. He said, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place. Until what? The day dawns and, the, and Yeshua, the morning star shines in what? In your hearts. 
Look at verse 20. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. Now, we got to go into some scriptures to prove what we're saying concerning the prophets. It says that the prophets, right? Spoke with light. It says their words were like a lamp shining in a dark place. Look at, look at, look at, look at this here. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at Psalms, verse 36, verse 7 through 9. Let's look at that right quick. Hold on one second. I should have had it up, but I didn't. All right. Let's look at what he's saying. See, the Lord is awakening us and showing us in his word what he's saying. Psalms 36, verse 7 through 9. Look at this. It says, how precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own house. Letting them drink from the river of your delights. Y'all see that? All right. Now, let's look at, let's look at Isaiah chapter 51, verse 4. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah 54, verse 4. 50, Isaiah 51, verse 4. It says, listen to me, my people. Hear me. Israel, for my Torah will be proclaimed. That's prophetic. So how is people telling you we're not supposed to follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Father? But, prof but prophetically here, he's saying, listen to me, my people. Hear me, Israel, for my Torah will be proclaimed. And my justice will become a what? A light to the nations. Anything a prophet says comes with light, not darkness. You see that? All right. Let's, let's go to another one. See, this is why the Bible says that we must, what, prove all things. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Psalms 119, verse 105. I know I be flip-flopping. <laughs> Y'all know how I do. I go from one extreme to the other, but it's all good. Look at our Psalms 119 verse 105. What does it say? It says, your word is what? Is a lamp to guide my feet and a what? And a light for my path. That's all David talked about in Psalms 119 is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. He, the Lord, he poured out his heart. Look at verse 104. It says, your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Why is it so much false doctrines in the body of Christ? Why? Because nobody is teaching anybody his law, statutes, and commandments. People be wondering, why is the church doing this? And why he said that? Because nobody's being taught his commandments. David is saying, by me following your, under, your commandments, it has given me understanding. The Bible says, and all that I get, and get an understanding. That's what the Bible say, right? It says, no wonder I what? I hate every false way of life. These false prophets and false apostles love falsehood. Talks about that in the book of Isaiah too, that they have went into falsehood. They said they have made falsehood their guide. I believe that's in Isaiah or Jeremiah somewhere. Y'all see that? He says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Look at this. Let's go to Psalm, let's go to Isaiah chapter two. Thank you, Father, for your word. The word is so important, y'all. Stay in your word. You want to an answer from the Lord? You go to your word. And a true prophet will confirm what the Lord is, what the Lord is telling you. 
You see what I'm saying? Look at this. This is talking about the Lord's future reign. Verse one, this is Isaiah two, verse one. This is the vision that Isaiah, son of Amar, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. God bless you, Sister Gina. Thank you. To God be the glory. I love you, sis. You're a good sister. The Lord is going to bless you tremendously, sister. Hey, Sister Gina Moore, the Lord is saying to you that you are special and he's going to do some things for you. The Lord said he's going to continue to protect you and your family. The Lord is going to do some magnificent things for you. The Lord said you, the Lord is showing me a vision. You've been crying a lot, but it's been joy. It's been peace. The Lord is refreshing you, Sister Gina. And the Lord said he's giving you a mouth of fire. He's going to direct you and he's going to direct your path and he's going to take you into a wealthy place. And the Lord said he's going to have cause you to find your fortunes. In Yeshua's mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, God bless you, Sister Jamie. But look at look at what Isaiah chapter 2 is saying. Look at verse 2. It says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be what? The highest of all. The most important place on the earth. It will be what? Raised above other hills. And people from all over the world will stream there to worship. It said, people from many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. Yes, because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the true and living God. That's why it's saying that. This is why David said in the book of Psalms that the gods of the nations are idols. He said, but our God made the heavens. Look at this. It says, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To what? To the house, to the, to the house of Jacob's God. Not Buddha, not Confucius, not Allah. All right, you got a lot of false prophets. They worship Buddha and a lot of other gods. And they prophesying over people. Become, making them become a stumbling block. It says, there he would do what? Teach us his ways. What are the ways of God? Torah. That's why he gave us Torah through Moses. He was giving us his ways. Read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. It'll tell you that. It says, there he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his what? In his paths. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. Then what are he going to do? Look, look at verse four. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. When the Antichrist come, the Antichrist is going to deceive them people over there in Jerusalem. He's going to deceive them. Then once he deceive them and make a contract with them, then he's going to be worshiped in the temple as God. So the Antichrist is not going to settle the international disputes, but he's going to deceive them to make them think he is. So once the Antichrist is worshiping the temple as God, after a while, the, the Yeshua is going to come and he's going to destroy the Antichrist armies. And he's going to walk through the Kadron Valley and he's going to walk through the Eastern Gate. Where the, where the temple is on the other side and he's going to destroy the Antichrist. Then the Lord will mediate between nations and settle international disputes. That's what it says here in Isaiah 2. Antichrist ain't going to do that. See, all of this stuff is designed to get us to worship the man of lawlessness. When the Antichrist come on the scene, he's going to let people know that he does not care about God's laws. He's lawless. He's a lawless buzzard. Look at this. It says they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war anymore. The reason why it's war over there because the wrong people are over there. They the synagogue of Satan. That's what Christ said in Revelation 2 and 9. He said for those that call themselves Jews and are not but they are the synagogue of Satan. They know who Yeshua is. They just don't like him. 
Don't let these people fool you. They know Yeshua is king of kings and lord of lords. They know that. They just don't want to serve him. All right? Look at what Yeshua says. What did Yeshua say in John 8 and 12? He said, I am the light of the world. He, he said, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right? All right. That was good. We proved what the prophets were saying. Everything they said of old came with light. The Bible says his word is a lamp. That's Torah. Y'all see that? Oh, my God. All right. What else we got? Um, let's go to, let's go, let's, we, let's stay in Psalms. Are we in Psalms? No, we're not in Psalms. Let's go to Psalms chapter five, verse five. It says, therefore, the proud may stand in your presence for you hate all who do evil. This is what Jeremiah, let me hold that. Let, let's go to Jeremiah 36. So y'all can see what I'm saying. The Lord gave Jeremiah a word. And he told, he told them to give it, to read it to the king. And the king told him, y'all need to hide. All right, Jeremiah sent Baruch to give a message. All right, will you read in Jeremiah 36 and Jeremiah 26? So look at this. Well, let's look at, let's see. Let's look at verse two. Jeremiah 36 and two. It said, get a scroll, write it down, all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message right up to the present time. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent when they hear again all the terrible things I have planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. Look at verse four. So Jeremiah sent for Baruch, son of Neri. And as Jeremiah dictated all the prophecies that the Lord had given them, Baruch wrote them on a scroll. Then Jeremiah said to Baruch, I am a prisoner here and unable to go to the temple. So you go to the temple on the next day of fasting and read the message from the Lord that I have had you to write on the scroll. Read them so the people who are there from all over Judah will hear them. Perhaps even yet they will turn from their evil ways and ask the Lord's forgiveness because it is too late. For the Lord has threatened them with his terrible anger. Right? So Baruch did as Jeremiah told him and read these messages from the Lord to the people at the temple. He did this on the day of sacred fasting held in late autumn during the fifth year of the reign of Jokiah, son of Josiah. People from all over Jer Judah had come to Jerusalem to attend the services at the temple on that day. Baruch read Jeremiah's wor words on a scroll to all the people. He stood in front of the temple room of Jeremiah, son of Shaphan, the secretary. This room was just off the upper courtyard of the temple near the new gate entrance right and so when they heard the messages he went out he went down to the secretary's room in the palace where the administrative officials were meeting Eleshmia, the secretary was there along with Shemaiah all of these words <laughs> I can't pronounce all right but look at look at verse 16 well, no, look at verse 15. It says, sit down and read the scroll to us, the official said, and Baruch did as they requested. When they heard all of the messages, they looked at one another in alarm. We must tell the king what we have heard. They said to Baruch, first of all, tell us how you got these messages. They, uh, they, did they come directly from Jeremiah? So Baruch explained, Jeremiah dictated them, and I wrote them down in ink, word for word on this scroll. You see that? He says, you and Jeremiah should both hide. This is what the officials is telling Jeremiah and Baruch. <laughs> he says, don't tell anyone where you are. He says, then the officials left the scroll for safekeeping in the room of Elamishia, the secretary, and went to tell the king what had happened. Then it goes on, starting in verse 21, how the king burns the scroll. Then starting in verse 27, Jeremiah rewrites the scroll. See that? Y'all have to read Jeremiah 36 so y'all can read it for yourself. Okay? This is what's going to happen 
when the Lord started using his remnant to really start telling the truth. Now, look at Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 4. Because this parallels with Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. Because in Matthew 23 and 34, Yeshua says, I'm, I send forth prophets and Torah teachers. That's what the Lord wants us to really concentrate on is Torah and teaching. Because he said, I'm sending forth Torah teachers and prophets. So look at Jeremiah 26 and 4. All right. He says, say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you will not listen to me and obey my word, I am giving you. See that? that that's Torah. Right. And if you will not listen to what? My servants, the prophets. That's paralleling with Matthew 23 and 34. I'm sending you forth prophets and Torah teachers. See that? See how all this go together? This is why if you, if you read, if, if we really study what the law and the prophets say, right? We will understand that everything they said parallels with what you, what you, everything Yeshua said parallels with the law and the prophets. Look at this. He said, if you would not listen to my servants, the prophets, for I sent them again and again to warn you, but you will not listen to them. So it says, then I will destroy this temple as destroy Shiloh, the place where the tabernacle was located. And I will make Jerusalem an object of cursing in every nation on earth. See that? All right, so I had to explain that before we go into some other stuff here, especially when we talk about Psalms 5 and 5. We just read Psalms 5 and 5. Let me go back to Psalms because I got a few more scriptures to read in Psalms. So when you look at Psalms, verse 5 and 5, it says, therefore the proud may stand in your presence for you hate all who do evil. Look at verse 6. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests Murderers and deceivers. See that? Let's see. Let's go to Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. Look at this. It says, God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. Every day he is. See that? He's a judge. The Bible says in Isaiah 33 and 22 that the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king, he wants us to obey. All right, we gonna, or we're not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Look at Psalms 139. Look at Psalms 139. Look at what he says here. Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home, you know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say, even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand a blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. You see that? He said, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell on the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I can ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Yeah, darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in other seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the room. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. You see that? 
Everything about the kingdom is about Torah and order, judgment. When you go before a judge, they judge you because you broke a law. When you go to court, they make you put your hand on the Bible. They said, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Why does they do that? Because they know Torah is in the Bible. That's why. None of us never even thought about that growing up. Why do, we have, why do we have to put our hand on the Bible? Because the law is in the Bible. The devil know that. Them judges in that courtroom know that too. But they don't judge you according to Torah. It says in the Torah, you shouldn't suffer a witch to live. But if you kill a witch, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> right? Did, what, what happened in the book of Numbers? When, when you read in the book of Numbers, right? When they killed that man for not for uh, for working on the Sabbath day. Can't do that no more. So that's why the Lord has to give us wisdom to stay out of trouble. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a lot of Masons that are judges. Yeah, the Masonic is evil and wicked. All right? The Lord is totally against that. The Lord going to judge all that stuff. They make you put your hand on the Bible in court. Why? Because the Torah is in the Bible. They know the law is in there. But then they'll judge you on their laws. This is why the saints is always in trouble. We don't obey him. Look at this. Look at verse 17. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. O God, if only if, if, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get, get out of my life, you murderers. Yeah, you got a whole lot of people that are killers. Masons in our black community have people killed every day. That's why all these murders and stuff is going on. All of it is Masonic and drugs. And some of our preachers are Masons. And they ordaining people. Yeah. This is what this is why the church is out of order. Hey! Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, man. I'm talking. Don't interrupt me while I'm talking. I'm in a zone here. Yeah. It says, if you would destroy the wicked, get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. This is what, this is what David is telling the Lord. He said, they blaspheme you. Your enemy misuse your name. Oh, Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? He's asking the Lord a question here. Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred. For your enemies are my enemies. His enemies should not be our lovers. You know how many people in ministry that are murderers, that blaspheme the name of the Lord and misuse his name, and they hate the Lord, and they hate you. He said, yes, I hate them with total hatred. For your enemies are my enemies. Search me, O God, and what? Know my heart. These people's heart is wicked, but they calling on the name of Jesus and they speaking in tongues. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. What is he saying here? Lord, test. This is why we go through tests and trials. Don't let people make you feel bad about going through stuff. Do not let the enemy make you feel bad and make you think that people are passing you up. Because them people that you think passing you up, they, they could be in total destruction. But the Lord is testing you because he want to make sure you don't do what they do. He, look at it. Point out anything in me that what offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. We bypass our, listen, a lot of us are traumatized. A lot of us have been hurt. We still ain't healed. We want to use ministry and being a prophet and a prophetess to override the fact that we're still hurt. 
And then when the Lord want to give you a blessing, you reject it because you're not healed. You're traumatized. Anything that the Lord gives, there is no sorrow in it. We can't even see that because we're still hurt. But the Lord allowed us to be traumatized in this, this, this Western world. Why? Because it was designed to get us to him. Because he said, I'm going to give my people eyes that they cannot see and ears that they cannot hear. I was in a conversation with Sister Monica. Y'all know Sister Monica that be on here on Clubhouse. She said something to me that blew my mind, but I already knew it, but she made it so vivid. She said, Eric, she said, here in America, in the Western world, she said they did a, uh, a test run. She said they purposely built a society full of witchcraft and sorcery. And that's what this place is. Because the Bible says, I believe in Jeremiah somewhere, that you're going to be in the land of your enemies. Yeah, that's where we are right now in the Western world, the land of our enemies. So we've been traumatized. We've been hurt. We'd have gone through things. Even when you read in Second Ezra's in the Apocrypha, it talks about how we have walked in unpleasant places. So the Lord wants to heal us. And I'm talking to me, too. Let's let God search our heart and test us, y'all, so we can get what he wants us to have. There's no sense of holding on to stuff. If we keep holding on to things, we can't get what God wants us to have. But you know what the enemy will do? When the enemy knows that we refuse to let God do what he's going to do in us, then the devil will say, well, why they, why they disobeying God, I'm going to bless them. Aren't we tired of going through vicious cycles? We can't do it our way. Look at, look at, uh, let's look at Psalms 103. David was real serious about the Lord and his Torah. He wasn't playing. The, the more we learn about it, the more we understand these scriptures. Oh, they was talking about Torah, even in the New Testament. It was not no New Testament that was there when Christ was here. Look at, look at, look at Psalms 103. Where is that, where is that verse at? Uh, look at this. Look at verse 17. Psalms 103, verse 17. It says, but the love of the Lord remains forever with those who what? Fear him. Hey! Lord, his salvation extends to the children's children. Verse 18, of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who what? Obey his commands. Look at verse 19. The Lord has made the heavens his throne, for there he rules over everything. When you read in Psalms chapter 85, it says that his throne was created for judgment. That's the whole purpose of why he's going to judge us according to Torah. Lord, have mercy. Help us. Look at, uh, did I read Psalms 138 already? No, I didn't read 138. I read 130. Wait a minute. I think I, wait a minute. Let me see. Boy, I'm telling you. Who is so much? Let me see. I think it's 130. I think I, yeah, I didn't read 138. Let's look at Psalms 138. It says, I give thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I sing praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises are backed by the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord. For all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's what? Ways. That's Torah. For the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. He wants us to humble ourselves and get healed, get delivered, 
so we can get what we need to get from the Lord. We we wanna we wanna um sit around here and not be healed and then have the nerve to say what we want. And the Lord got the best for us. That's what he said in 2 Peter 1. He said that he's going to give us precious promises. Everything he gives is precious. Look at this. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble. But he keeps his distance from the proud. The Lord don't like pride. He keeps his distance because they're not willing to say, hey, I got a problem. I need help. Look at this. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me for you made me. All right. Uh, let's see what else I got. What else I got? What else I got? I want to read this to you all. This is something, uh, a, a blog that I found. I want to read it. It's, it's very interesting. It's talking about religion. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. All right. Uh, it says, let me see. Maybe I should go to the website. Let me go to the website so I can read it. Because I got it in my notes. But I want to read the website so I don't have to be. Look at this. It says, there is a certain pastoral simplicity to the Torah. It says, after all, the Torah was given to a largely pastoral and agricultural society. It says, there are numerous aspects of Torah designed for farmers, land use, and, and planting of crops, fruit, trees, etc. There are laws about oxen and animal labor, which it is because that's in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Exodus, right? It says there are laws about gleaning the corners of one field. It is not as if the Torah in its pastoral simplicity is difficult to understand or obey. Placing fringes of blue on the corners of one garments is not too difficult to do. Setting aside the seventh day of the week for rest and worship is so simple. A child could do it. Wearing unmixed clothing is easy. These commands are straightforward, clear and simple. Uh, I'm, I'm reading, a, I'm quoting a, a blog here. This is not me. This is somebody else's blog. So I don't want nobody to think I'm plagiarizing. All right. It says, this is what this man of God says. It said, he baffles me. It baffles me that Christians would claim the Torah is too difficult to obey. He said it is easiest set of commandments to practically implement, implement in one's life. He says, but in this pastoral simplicity, the carnal mind resists the Torah. He says the carnal man desires something more complex, something more secret. It says the kebab, he says, now he's getting ready to start talking about religions, right? He says the Kabbalah appeals to some because of its promise to bestow hidden mysteries upon its followers. It says it makes a man feel superior to others. It says Islamic law attempts to place a control mechanism upon nations giving men power. He says Buddhism and Hinduism promises to allow a man to tap into secrets of nature and to become one with the universe. New Age religion promises to put one in contact with spirits. We know those are demonic spirits, right? It says every other religion appeals to man's selfishness, pride, lust, and hunger for power and control over others. This is why Paul, now, now this is why Paul said, you all the Corinthians, that Satan is what? The God of this world which means that Satan is worshiped through religion. What did Paul say? He said, for the God of this world has what? Blinded the minds of them that what? Believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ shine on them. If you look at the chart, if y'all Google a chart of all the religions of the world, Christianity is one of them. 
So Yeshua didn't come to fulfill Christianity. He came to fulfill what Moses and the prophets said he would do. Christianity wasn't created until Christ died, resurrected, and ascended to be with his heavenly father. Then hundreds of years later, they created it. Anything that is new is wicked. That's why a man, when they compartmentalize the Bible, they call it New and Old Testament to throw people off. But Yeshua said, behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That's what the Bible, that's what he said. And then he said in the book of Matthew, he said, if any man wants to know anything about me, he says, search the scriptures. It is written of me. So Christ didn't come to fulfill Christianity. He came to fulfill what Moses and the prophets said he would do. Not Christianity. Now, I'm going to go back to this blog. Look at what this man is saying. This is deep. I'm, I'm quoting a blog here. He says, even Christianity and Judaism embraces a set of man-made rules in order to create heretical power, given dominance to a few to control the masses. This is Satan's way. Look at what this man is saying here. He said, in contrast, the Torah is simple, easy to follow, accessible to all, but bestows wisdom from above that can outdo any herarit to any other religion. David, he, look, he's quoting what David said in the book of Psalms. He says, David declares that those who follow Torah become wiser than the ancients. That's true. David said, your, he said, Lord, your precepts have made me wiser than the ones that taught me. David says that in the book of Psalms. Look at this. It says, in its simplicity, it makes wise the simple. He says, Satan and carnal men love to complement matters. Complicate, I'm sorry. Complicate matters. The simplicity of Torah has no appeal for the sinner. Woo! That's a good one there. That's why Paul said that Torah is designed to show us our sins. That's why our modern day preachers don't want to talk about it. They don't want you to know the truth. Wow. I'm glad I found this blog. It's deep. I never even looked at it like that. I mean, we know all these religions are wicked and evil, but I never looked at it like that. He says Kabbalah appeals to some because of his promise to bestow hidden mysteries. He says, and it, he said it makes a man feel superior to others. It says Islamic law attempts to place a control mechanism upon nations giving men power. Buddhism and Hinduism promised us to allow a man to tap into secrets of nature and to become one with the universe. New Age religion promises to put one in contact with spirits. We know the Torah tells us in Leviticus to stay away from people that deal with all this mess. It says stay away from, uh, what does it say? Familiar spirits. He says every other religion appeals to a man's selfish, selfishness, pride, lust, and hunger for power and control over others. So the part when he say even Christianity and Judaism embrace a set man-made rules in order to create what? Heretical power giving dominance to a few to control the masses. That's denominations. Denominations have their own laws and rules, but they deny Torah. I grew up in a denomination. Uh, they had their own laws, commandments. We didn't know nothing about Torah growing up. We just knew we loved the Lord. We didn't know that denominations were evil at that time. We was just following because that's how we grew up. But thank the Lord for deliverance. All right. I'm almost finished here. All right. Let's go to. Let's go to Titus chapter two. Thank you, Lord. Titus chapter two. Let me see. Let's start at verse 11 through 14. All right. Titus chapter two. It says, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. 
and we are instructed to turn from, turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. That's our job, y'all. I know it hurts the flesh sometimes, but you got to do it. It says, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our God, of, the, of our great God and Savior Yeshua will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. He said, you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. That's a commandment. In other words, you know people ain't going to really listen to you when you tell the truth, but you got to tell them anyway. And if they don't listen, then dust off your feet. That's what it's saying, basically. But I love that blog. That blog is deep, real deep. Uh, let me see. Do I have time to read Enoch? Let's go to Enoch chapter, first Enoch chapter 100. I, I think I need to read that right quick. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. Look at this. This is 1 Enoch chapter 100. It says, in those days, I got the link for anybody that's on uh, Facebook. I got the link up. Everybody here in Clubhouse, y'all got the link. I ain't got to send it to y'all no more. Y'all already got it already. All right, 1 Enoch chapter 100. It says, in, and in those days, in one place, the fathers together with their sons shall be smitten and brothers one with another shall fall in death till the streams flow from their blood. For a man shall not withhold his hand from slaying his son and his son's sons, and the sinner shall not withhold his hand from his honored brother. From dawn till sunset, they shall slay one another. And the horse shall walk up to the breast of the blood of sinners, and the chariot should be submerged to his height. So that's talking about in Revelations 14. When that angel sends the sickle, that's prophetic future. That's a futuristic prophetic word. The Bible says in Revelation 14 that, that, that it's going to be a sickle that's going to be slung and it's going to kill the wicked. And it says that the blood is going to be so high that it's going to be up to a horse's neck. Ain't, am, ain't that, am I right, Sister Wanda? <laughs> Look at this. This is what Enoch is talking about. See, that's why it's important for us to go into these books because they're telling us exactly what's in the 66 books. You see that? Look, look at verse 3 again. It says, And the horse shall walk up to the breast and the blood of sinners. This is what it's talking about in Revelation 14. This is 1 Enoch 100. And the chariot shall be submerged to its height. And in those days, the angels shall descend into, into the secret places and gather together into one place all those who brought down sin. So anybody that came against sin, the angel going to be like, I got you. <laughs> Real talk. Because look, the angels are subject to Torah, y'all. When you read in Acts chapter 7, verse 53, when they got up to preach to the people, they said the angels brought Torah. Then when you read in the book of Galatians chapter four, it talks about the angels brought the Torah to Moses. Yes. The Lord said, go down there and bring that Torah down there to Moses. So angels create miracles and signs and wonders for us when we obey Torah. So why I know what, some of y'all wondering well, what they got to do with sin, Eric. I'm going to show you. Look at, look at first, first Enoch 100 verse 4 again. In those days, the angels shall descend into the secret places and gather together into one place all those who brought down sin. What does it say in first John 3 and 4? It says that sin is the transgression of Torah. That's why. And it says, and the most high will arise on that day of judgment to execute great judgment among sinners. 
and all over the and all and over all the righteous and holy will appoint guardians from amongst the holy angels to guard them as the apple of an eye until he makes an end of all wickedness and all sin. And though the righteous sleep in long sleep, they have naught to fear. And then the children of the earth shall see the wise in security and shall understand all the words of this book and recognize that their riches shall not be able to save them. That's why they keep lying about, if you look at the black community, our people are obsessed with things. We worship money like crazy. Yes. That's why they created social media so that people can worship the stuff that they got. It says, and recognize that their riches shall not be able to save them in the overthrow of their sins. Woe to you sinners on the day of strong anguish, you who afflict the righteous and burn them with fire. You shall be requited according to your works. We, I'm sorry, you shall be required according to your works. Woe to you, you abstinent of heart, who watch in order to devise wickedness. Therefore shall fear come upon you, and there shall be none to help you. Woe to you, sinners, on account of the words of your mouth, and on account of the deeds of your hands, which your godlessness has wrought. It tells you that some, in somewhere in the, book of, in the book of Proverbs, when it talks about how a man do his hands a certain way. Like Masons do, they, they use signals. You know, sometimes if a Mason is on the side of the road and his, and his car break down, he do a symbol with his hand so in case a Mason drive by here to help him. But the Bible says that the Lord is our present help in the time of trouble. Just saying. It tell, I, what's, what chapter is that, Sister Wanda, in Proverbs where it talks about a man doing his signals with his hands and with his feet? It says that man is wicked. You see what I'm saying? This is what he's saying here. He says, on account of the deeds of your hands, which your godlessness has wrought, and blazing fire burning worse than fire you shall burn. This is why it talks about and book of Romans chapter six, using certain parts of our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness. Yes, I'm a man, I have a penis, a woman has a vagina, and we're supposed to use it, but we're supposed to use it in the right order. It's supposed to be in marriage. Not, not uh, performing, uh, doing pornography so the whole world can see you having sex I want to do these people. Are these people really shamed to have sex in front of the whole world? These people, they be doing pornography. Everybody see you. They didn't see you naked. You see how wicked this world is, y'all? The whole world has seen you have sex. And they come out and say, hey, everybody, I'm so-and-so. And we didn't see you have sex with everybody. <laughs> I know I used to look at pornography. We all have at some point. Dirty magazines, all that stuff. The Lord had to deliver me from that. Look at this. It says, in blaming fire burning worse than the fire you shall burn. And know that, and know ye that from the angel, angels he will acquire as to your deeds in heaven. Also, somebody told me that somebody had preached a message about me and masturbating to pornography. And it takes away your energy. It does. Especially if you're married. And you're masturbating to pornography. You don't even have enough energy for your wife. She'd be like, baby, let's have sex. You'd be like, I can't. I just masturbated. You got to say that for your wife, man. It's wicked. It's draining men. Pornography is. This is why Paul told Timothy that they, that they, have, uh, they don't have natural affection. And in first of uh, first and second Peter, it talks about unthinkable animals. All that stuff is animalistic and is wicked. If you if y'all know anybody that's uh, any man that's dealing with that, tell them to stop. They need to they need deliverance. Women too. You got women that masturbate to pornography too. It takes away your energy. It takes away from what the Lord created you to do with your body, with your husband and your wife. 
Look at verse 10. Psalms 1, uh, I'm sorry, 1st Enoch 100, verse 10. And know, know ye that from the angels he will acquire as to your deeds in heaven from the sun and from the moon and from the stars in reference to your sins because upon the earth you execute judgment on the righteous and he will summon to testify against you every cloud and midst and dew and rain. For they shall all be withheld because of you from descending upon you, and they shall be mindful of your sins. And now give presence of the rain that is that is to be not withheld from descending upon you, nor yet the dew when it has received gold and silver from you, that it may be descend. When the hoar frost and snow with your with their chillness, I don't understand what Enoch is saying here. And all the snowstorms and all their plagues fall upon you in those days, you shall not be able to stand before them. So this has been good, y'all. So, um, yeah, that's about it, y'all, that I got. Uh, tomorrow, the Day of Atonement starts at sundown tomorrow, y'all. Um, on the Day of Atonement, we are supposed to fast and pray. So we're supposed to fast and pray until sundown the next day. So a day of atonement starts at sundown tomorrow. The Lord willing, I will be on Clubhouse and Facebook Live, and we can talk about uh, Torah in the ministry, but also I want to talk about the day of atonement as well. All right? So God bless your uh, 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 prophet Anthony. You got something you want to say, man of God? Prophet Anthony, you there? I'm here. Okay, you want to say uh, you want to say something? Yeah, I want to chime in uh, a little bit. Uh, so, when we talk about the Torah, right? The Torah is, like I said, to me, it's the Constitution. So, I ask a prosecutor if you're going to prosecute somebody, can they use the Torah? Bible, it's <laughs> a good question. And their, you know, information. And I know the prosecutor is she's my cousin. And she says she does God bless you all on Facebook Live. I love you all. I pray that what we that what, what we've heard today will bless you all. It will create in you a clean heart, renewing a right renewing renew in us a right spirit. God bless you.